All right, now that we have that open, we'll go ahead and just pull it out here. Just an SSD from the Intel. Uh, I think this is a 675P. We'll go ahead and open this as well. So you just have your Intel warranty card. It's a five-year warranty. And the basic instructions on how to install, which is actually quite simple on these. Uh, pretty simple, you know, M.2 SSD. Uh, this is a Gen 3, so it is slower than, say, the year Gen 4. Um, but they also tend to be pretty cheap here. So, like I said, this is the 670. The 670P. Um, I thought it was 675. Maybe it's only 670. But, you know, you just slide this in, and I'll show you here in a second. But you just slide it in at a slight angle and then push it down. And there's a screw that goes here in the back. Super simple, super easy. We'll throw it in. Okay, so we've already shut down our computer. We'll go ahead and turn off the power supply on the back here. Um, the other part of it is there's just this little screw that holds on the glass panel. And then the glass panel just comes out. On most of them, they could be metal, they could be um, glass like this one. So. Just make sure you, you're careful with it. Now, like I said, I have my computer under my desk. And I'll just show you where this one goes. So this is just the motherboard, right? And you'll see there are a couple little standoffs. One there, one there, and one there. Those are the M.2 connectors um, and what we're going to do is we're going to put them in we're going to just put it in since this is an m a version or gen 3 i'm going to put it down here just kind of out of the way because um, i do have some other things that i might put into the pci slots i may end up putting in a um putting this in one of the heat sinks just because these drives do run a little hot, right? So if you remember whenever I built this, there's a heat sink here for the main drive. And um, so I'm gonna try to keep that, you know, where it is. So on this one, you can see we have this little standoff already right there. Um, you can use that one, or if you remember, I showed you, if you pay, if you watched that video, I showed that there they had a different standoff that had the quick latch instead of a screw. So I'm going to take this out, the one that's in there currently, and put in the quick latch um, screw. So that's just what... So it should just take a second to take out this and install the next one. So I just changed the angle so it'd be a little easier to see. We're just going in to that hole right there. And like I said, it'd be easier if I didn't have the card in here and the graphics card and some other things. But I'm trying to make it to where you can still see it. Camera makes it a little harder to, to see it. So let me see if I can shift my light around here. But 
if I didn't have all this in the way, it'd actually be quite simple to do. It just goes in here and you can tighten it with your finger. We'll switch the angle back, but as you can see there, it's just slightly in there. Um, and what we'll do is we'll change the angle back so it's a little easier to see. All right, we just changed the angle back. As you can see, it's here. So to tighten it up, you just place your screwdriver in there and just tighten it. Super simple. Once it's tight, you can release it. Now, in order to install this, you have to put it in at an angle, like so. It goes in an angle like this. Make sure you line up your notches. It goes in, so there's a notch there. You can see it at the bottom. There's a little notch right here. So you line those up. You slide it forward so you don't see the contacts anymore. Then you push in. And if you have the screw type, you just tighten it up. If you have the little quick lock like I have here, you can just tight, uh, spin it over. There we go, now I got it in place. All right, so there it is, now it's in place. Like I said, you just have this little so you can either tighten it in with a screw, which is a pain, or you can push this little locking mechanism over it. To hold it in place. And for this one, that's as simple as that. If it's the screw type, you just tighten it until it's, you know, it's tight. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put back on the case siding and uh, power it all back up but you'll see here in a moment that it's that it's uh, then we'll go ahead and format it everything all right let's slide back on the case the glass in this case just slides on it's kind of magnetic up there a little screw on the back like i said just to hold it in there and we are good make sure you power back on your your drive then what I'm gonna do is also just turn on the power button here. That's it for right here. We'll go up to the PC and format it to work with our drive and then do some speed tests. All right, so the first thing we'll do is we'll right click on the start button and go to disk management. And you might, you should see this uh, um, window pop up. And there's different styles that you can do this. So this is disc one. Um, as you can see here, shows that it's a, it's a one terabyte, which is what our drive is. And you can go on and select which style of disc that you would like. All right, so when selecting between these, uh, Somewhat it's, it's a personal preference, somewhat it's your drive size. So if you have greater than a two terabyte, you have to go with the GTP here. Excuse me, GPT, yeah. Um, and the reason being is this is a newer uh, type of partition or a newer type of formatting. I won't say formatting because it's not formatting. Um, but you would want to go with that if it's greater than two because two terabytes because the MBR, so the master boot record, cannot do two terabytes or more. So you would want to go with GPT. Um, I am going to put on GPT because I prefer that. Uh, now there is a note here that says GPT partition style is not recognized by all previous versions of Windows, and that's what I was kind of getting at. Um, GPT is newer. I think it came out about 2006, 2007, um, somewhere right around there. I don't remember exactly when. Um, 
and the Master Boot's been out since the 80s. Um, so I am gonna initialize it as GPT, and that is my suggestion for you know newer PCs, newer, newer, um, newer drives that you're putting in. Um, you can convert it to the other one later. However, there are some not great things that could happen. So uh, GPT is mine, and then like you'd select disk one here. If you put in two or three in. Like let's say you put in uh, three more SSDs, then you'd have two or three listed here. So click OK, and it'll come up and it'll say online, where before it was not online. You can, and then it'll say unallocated, which means that it doesn't know anything. Um, or I should say, the system is seeing it as, it's just there, but I don't know what to do with it. So I'm gonna do new, you right click and say new sample volume um, and this will be basically your your complete volume size here so it should be the top here it'll say max it'll say min and it'll say the number that you have which this one is roughly 975,000 and that's the number down here right because I'm not putting this as two partitions I'm putting in this as one single volume so you click OK you can assign it a letter. Um, I typically will just follow the presets or for this one, I'm gonna do V. Um, the, the reason here doesn't matter. You can choose any of the letters. Don't choose, I don't like to choose D, E, F, and G because, and H because of some of the hard drives I plug in will auto assign to those. So if I have it as H or G, and then I have those, and then I have this as H or G, then um, it won't auto assign anymore, and that's not what I want. So, um, so I'm going to click V. Next, and I'm going to format it in the NTFS style. There's XFAT, there's NTFS, which is what I prefer. I'm going to label this as video backup because that's what this one's for and you can label it whatever you want whatever you're going to use it for like uh, the C drive will be you know it will be uh, uh, system or Windows or OS or something of that nature um, and then I'm going to perform a quick format and then it'll just talk about the drives, compression, if you want to enf enable file and folder compression, which I don't. Um, click finish. It'll take it, you know, 30 seconds a minute. And uh, now it's done. And so now we can go here and you can see just up here that we have 953 terabytes um, which funny enough my SSD from Samsung which is a 980 Pro no excuse me not yet 980 Pro only shows 931 gigs where this Intel is showing 953 so about 22 more now there are there is a backup partition here. Um, actually, we can look and see how big it is. I don't remember how big it is. The backup partition is only 100 megs, so um, get a lot more space for or wait 22 more gigabytes of space on the Intel. A little strange. I know that different vendors are a little different, but usually it's in the one to two gigabytes, not the 10 to 20, or in this case, 22. Um, so next, we're going to do some speed tests with ATTO, just to see what we're, what we're looking at here. So this is just ATTO benchmark, disk benchmark. So what we'll do first is just set our parameters here and I'm just going to move it up a little bit because I don't care about the smaller smaller size and I don't want to run it too much. 
um, but we're just going to do one megabyte to 32 megabytes and the file size is roughly 256 megs. Click start. So this is on the 980 Pro, so the Samsung. We'll just compare the two. Um, and as you see here, it'll be pretty quick. It takes about a minute or two um, to do this. But as you can see here, at one megabyte size files, it is writing at 4.6 and reading at 6.2. Um, and it's similar at the two megs. And honestly, this is about where it should be. I think it'll get up to about five and I think to about seven. I don't remember what the specs are on this offhand. Um, you know what, I'll look it up real quick. So the specs on this for the one terabyte are it should be five mega or five, five thousand megabits write and seven thousand read. Um, so as you can see here, we're we're losing about uh, ten percent. Not sure exactly why this is in a PCI four slot. This is the prime spot on my drive. Um, so let's look at, we'll start the same thing. Now we're going to do drive V. That's our Intel drive. So we'll go ahead and start that and I'll tell you what the numbers are there. I think the read speed on this is supposed to be Let's see, it's supposed to be 3.5 gigs read and 2.5 gigs write. So, as you can see here, at least in these smaller files, we're pretty close. Um, we're at 2.6, so this is better than they stated. This is just a slight bit better than they stated, 2.6 gigs. And on the read speed, we're a little bit lower at 3.2 and 3.0. Um, now these speeds are up to and there's a lot of things that change there right the more you write so some of these will have caches that are um, small and therefore can only fit so much at a time but honestly even though this is half the speed of my of the samsung this is still faster than most of the ones actually this is faster than all the ones that i have my laptops and there are various brands i think i have a uh, Coexia, which is um, Toshiba, I have, which is doesn't even get a gig. It gets 750, so three-fourths of a gig, roughly. Um, so ultimately, the write speed here is not so bad. Um, it's not as good as the 960, but this drive is also about half the price. And honestly, for most things you do, will probably be good enough, if not great. All right. So I'm not going to save that, but that's the drive in use.